Maxine Emma Amberville. Right. Welcome home. What's going on here? Oh, I don't know. Someone's trying to sneak a board of directors meeting past us. We weren't notified. Your mother's decided to cease publication of the four magazines that are losing money. You are my father's younger brother, but you have never been a part of his publications, and you never will be. Yesterday, your mother and I were married. My God, mother, he just died five months ago. Oh, my goodness, your brother's coming. What the hell are you doing here? She told me I was the best she ever had. Jealous, eh? Well, I have this big plan for a new fashion magazine mm -hmm. called Style. I want you to be its editor. This magazine is a great success. to marry me. Why does love have to mean marriage? Well, why not? Uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, when you turned around just now, I got this awful pit in my stomach. Now, either I'm desperately hungry, or I've fallen in love with you forever. What has he done to me? Nothing. I did it to myself. I said no. She didn't. Cutter, this is Lily. I think it'd look odd if we shook hands, wouldn't it? This is your sister-in-law, in case you had her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you'd come. Tell him sooner or later. Why? Because I'm going to have your baby. Darling, I'll not have an abortion. I mean, how can you have my baby? Use some of your old family connections and get your old pal cutter a nice solid spot here in San Francisco, huh? How was your first month in Alexander's school? What's his family like? Waiting for wedding bells. Candace is a marriage material. How do I be here? And I'd prefer to keep my business life separate from my private life. Do you think you could become my private life, Candy? Uh, well, look, Maxie, I don't have the uh, time to train you, so you're going to have to uh, learn as you work. Cleaning up these paintbrushes. Maxie. I hope you weren't expecting somebody else. My daughter's suicide was the result of her discovery of Cutter Amberville's relationship with your wife. You will never see Cutter again. And if you contact him in person in any way, I'll kill him. We'll have Manhattan, the Bronx and Staten Island too. It's lovely going through. Very fancy on old Delancey Street, you know. The subway charms us so when balmy breezes blow to and fro. And tell me what street compares with Mott Street in July. Sweet push carts gently glide. Great big city's a wondrous toy Just made for a girl and boy We'll turn Manhattan into an Isle of Joy We'll go to Yonkers Where true love conquers in the wilds And starve together deep Baloney on a roll in Central Park. We'll stroll where our first kiss we stole, soul to soul. And my fair lady is a terrific show, they say. We both may see it close someday. The city. Glamour can never spoil 
the dreams of a boy and girl will turn Manhattan into an Isle of Joy. in a loft, in Soho, carrying on the most torrid, passionate love affair since La Bouette. I can't stand it! I'm so jealous I could die! It'll happen to you! Well, it's better! This is exactly the kind of experience I need if I'm gonna be an actress! Okay, oh God, okay, 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 what am I feeling? Because I can use this someday. <laughs> problems, really. See, my parents are coming back from Europe tonight. And Rocco doesn't even know I have parents, let alone who they are. And of course, they know nothing about Rocco. You mean you never told him who you were? Well, he's very Italian. And if he had known I was the boss's daughter, he wouldn't have had anything to do with the me. The boss's daughter, Max, is one of the richest men in America. Cindy, you are making this worse. Then tell him the truth. No, don't even say that word. But you said that Rocco always tells the truth. That means when he finds out, he won't trust you anymore. India, you don't seem to understand. This is the most important thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life. There is nothing more important that will ever happen to me. I have got to make this work. Ben, tell him the truth. I can't. It's too late for the... You know what? Too late? Much... Much too late. Maxie, no. You're pregnant. Yes, I'm pregnant! <laughs> India, I'm pregnant! I'm gonna have a little bambino, a little bambino that's gonna look just like Rocco, all pink and with curly black hair. Oh, I can't wait! I wish it were tomorrow. What are you gonna do? I'll sew, I'll knit, I'll take natural childbirth. Do your parents know? No. I'll tell them tonight. Aren't you afraid? Of course not. What can they do? Maxie? They'll kill me. No, they won't, Bat. They never blame you for anything. But I was supposed to be watching out for you. I hid it from you. It wasn't hard to do. <laughs> Ow. Step. Go ahead in. And Greece was really far out. Mykonos, the crater inside Santorini, the water was crystal clear. You know, Mom loved it. She didn't even go shopping. In fact, you know, Mom and Dad, they got along really well this summer. I think something mm, happened. I'm gonna be sick. No, not in there. No, that's my dark room. I'm developing. Justin, fine, I'll go down the hall. What's the matter with her? Why'd she come up here? She didn't even say hi to Mom and Dad. I'll tell you later. But tell me more about this summer. Oh, it was great. I got a 28 to 80 macro-focusing zoom lens. Look, take a look at these. See? That's Mykonos. All the buildings are painted white, and all the shutters and doors are beautiful primary colors. Justin, I can't really see. Is it worse? Yeah, I saw the doctor yesterday. He said there's nothing they can do. Flashes of clear vision used to come and go, but now I really can't see anything. But I'm okay about it. Really, I mean, everybody's got something, right? Mine is I can't see. But I'm sure these are good. Well, wish me luck. Hey, I'm with you all the way. Thanks. What's going on? Maxie's got a problem that I'm going to let her tell you about. Hi, Daddy. Baby. Who have you been Hi. hiding? Huh? Sit down here. Tell me. How was your summer? Uh, great. I heard very good things about you at the office. 
Billy, what'd you hear? Well, I heard that you were a good assistant, you worked very hard, and you were a big help to the art director. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm very proud of you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, 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 How was your son? Oh, you look blooming. But why do you always cover your forehead like that, hmm? What have you got on? You look like a hippie. Uh, I have, um, some news for you both. I met a wonderful man. <laughs> I'm really happy. I'm in love. And I'm gonna have a baby. Fix me a drink, would you please, Lily? And how long have you known this? Wonderful man. Three months. Didn't you hear me? I'm in love. Who is it? Bracco Cipriani. He's the art director at Savoir Vive. I'm gonna tear him apart piece by piece. Daddy, please, he's... Uh, he had nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah, how did it happen? By remote control? Do you ha does he have any idea how old you are? No, I lied to him. I, I talked him into it. Daddy, please don't be mad. Look, I, he's perfect for me. I love him, and I'm going to marry him. And how does he feel about all this? Have you both talked about it? Well, yes, of course, just like two adults. He's, he's deliriously happy. Maxie. Maxie, you don't know what you're doing. Don't you want me to be happy? Don't you? Want me to be happy? Do you think this marriage is going to last? She's not even 18 yet. She doesn't know the first thing about responsibility. There's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> so we might as well accept it, all right? There's the morals of an alley cat. No idea what's right or wrong. Right or wrong? Ah, look who's talking. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. You can hold it over my head for the rest of my life. No, we came to terms. You're not going to see him again, and I'm not going to bring it up again. It's over. But I have faith in Maxie. I don't think either of us should stand in the way of her happiness. Rocco, did you ever pretend to be somebody else? No, why? Well, you have such a wonderful imagination. Didn't you ever make up something? And then act as if it were the truth. And then get stuck in a fantasy that was better than real life. You want to tell me what you're talking about? Me. I, uh, I told you some things that aren't really true. Well, I, I pretended. You pretended? Like what? Promise you won't get mad? How can I promise you something if I don't know what you're going to tell me? You can do it. Please. Okay. Tell me. I'm not really 19. I'll be 18 in a month. And I'm not going to Vassar because I'm still in high school. And my name isn't Adamson. It's Amberville. And my father owns Amberville Publications. And the reason I'm telling you all this right now is because I'm pregnant. What? I'm 17. Not that. Vassar? After that. M my father, Zachary. Yeah, Apple. right, that. And you are... I'm pregnant. <laughs> is there anything you've told me that is true? I love you. Uh, Rocco, I didn't lie about anything important, just the facts. Oh, only the well, facts? The important thing is that I love you, and you love me too, I know you do, because you told me. Yeah, well, I do. Okay, well, well then, a Maxi by any other name is still... Pregnant. Yeah, with a little boy. He will look just like you, with your beautiful blue eyes, and your talent, who will love you to pieces and call you Papa. I suppose you want to get married. Only if you do. Otherwise, it can go on like this. I can be your mistress and live in your loft and bear your son out of wedlock. Forget it. We'll get married. 
we will. No, oh, Rocco, I love you so much. <laughs> and I guess, I guess I love you too. Wait, wait. I have one condition. All right? No big way, okay? Good morning. This is all my fault. I should never let Maxie have that summer job. Hello. Yeah, hello. It's my fault. I put it in the art department. Hello. Actually, it's Maxie's fault. I never had a chance when she made up her mind. Hello. You look so beautiful. Thanks. Okay, okay, what am I feeling? I'm so happy oh, for you. Give me a hug. <laughs> Maxine. Oh, didn't you have your hair done? I did, Mother. Then why is it Mother, still please, so... I'm about to be a married woman. I know. And everything's going to change now. You're used to having your own way. That doesn't always work in the marriage. Mother, Rocco and I lived together all summer. I don't think I'm a child anymore. Maxine, there's more to marriage than fun and games. Marriage is about not always having what you want. I had to give up the most important thing in my life, ballet. Toby, how do I look? I wouldn't know, Rocco. You better ask Justin. Justin? You look really good. Rocco, Justin and I want you to know that we sympathize with you. Not about Maxie. About the wedding. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Madison Square Garden was booked, huh? There's a fella out here who says he wants me to give you to him. What do you say? You feel like being given? How's he doing? Is he nervous? No more than a fighter pilot on his first mission. Oh, no. How about you? Oh, my God, it's about to begin. <laughs> Do you want a little fatherly advice while you still have the chance? Always. Trust yourself. Trust Rocco. And stay together. Good things are worth fighting for. I love you, Daddy. I love you so much. Max? You're ready. <laughs> Shall we? Mm -hmm. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's innocence, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church. Rocco Joseph Anthony. Wilt thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together according to God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? 
Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her, so long as you both shall live? I will. Maxime Emma, wilt thou have this man to be thy wedded husband? to live together according to God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him, so long as you both shall live? I will. So here I am, right back in New York again. You son of a gun. You always land on your feet. Living in Europe, cushy job at a Belgian bank, <laughs> different girl every night, <laughs> if I know you. How long are you here for? Uh, just a week. Come on, Bookie, tell now, me. Now tell me, is what? it true? What they say about Swedish girls? Just the opposite. Cold fish. Ah, it's the German girls if you want to die and go to heaven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Come on, Porky, tell me what's been going on. I feel like I've been gone for a year. No, not too much. I mean, you'd recognize the place. Things are pretty much the same. All right. Let me get drunk to you. Yeah. <laughs> that was a mantra shot. I had no idea he was going to be here. You were still in Europe. I'm visiting. Obviously, I can't stop you from coming to New York, but I'm warning you. you stay away from my family. King of the hill here, aren't you? All that ugliness inside, hidden by that oh-so-smooth veneer. Let me tell you, big brother, one day the world's gonna know you the way I do. It's a day I live for. Because I want to do this my way. It is my baby. I know, darling, but... We're not saying that... Go on. I only want you to understand that I'm not your enemy. I only want to help. <sighs> Nobody is suggesting taking your baby away from you, sweetheart. We're just offering help if you want it. I don't want it. A nanny for the baby. Someone to help with the cooking. A comfortable apartment instead of a cold water flat. Mother! I promised Rocco that I would live on what he makes, and I will. Hey, Rocco. Hi, Zachary. Morning, Lily. Hi, sweetheart. You call if you need anything. Bye. Or if you change your mind. Change your mind? Change your mind about what? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, Rocco, isn't she a beautiful baby? She is. The most beautiful baby in the whole world. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You sure you're not sorry it's a girl? Of course not. This way, I can worry about who she goes out on a date with, what time she comes home, and if he brings her home late, I'll threaten to break both of his legs. All that good old-fashioned Italian stuff, you know. There's there a little is. girl here who's awfully hungry. That's Daddy's little girl. Oh. Hey. I thought I'd name her Angelica. After your grandmother. Oh, Maxie. Thank you. And I love you too, little baby. She's hungry. 
You'll see, Rocco. I am going to be the most wonderful mother in the world. I'm going to fold her diapers. I'm going to take her places. I'm going <laughs> to teach her things. I'm going to play with her. I'm not going to make all those same mistakes my mother made. and artichokes and salad niçoise with artichokes. Starting from scratch with live lobster? <laughs> Isn't that a little ambitious? <laughs> Nothing is too good for Rocco. Okay, trim two artichokes. Remove the chokes, cut out their hearts. Pretty desperate, huh? Look, why don't you order it to go from someplace in the neighborhood? I do that every night. I promised Rocco that I would try to make ends meet. Oh, honey, I'll be right there, sweetheart. Well, then make him something easy, a steak. Look, Rocco's mother is a wonderful cook. I promised him I would learn. Or else he'll go back to her. Forget it, Max, if he loves you. Coming, honey. Why don't you get some help, at least? We can't afford it. Maxie. Housework, raise their children with no help at all. If they can do it, I can do it. Oh, God, if it only looks so hot. Mm, poor baby, she has heat rash. And we have been trying to get this air conditioning fixed for last three weeks. Well, here, let me help with dinner. After all, I am a pretty good cook. No, sit down, sit down. I can do this myself. I don't need any help. Oh, God, the lobsters. They're fighting back. Rocco. I've been neglecting Angelica's education. Maxie, she's only three months old. Yeah, but if we had a nanny, I'd have the time to teach her things. Values only a mother could provide. We can't afford a nanny. Besides, I don't believe in them. Yeah, but I had one. My brothers had one, and we all turned out fine. And my mother raised five children without one, and we turned out just fine, too. Now go to sleep, please. I'm tired. Rocco. What? I'm such a failure at everything. I mean, the dinner was horrible tonight. The dinner was fine tonight. Lobster just isn't meant to be, uh, rare. Honey, it's so hot. And we can't get the air conditioning fixed. Poor Angelica, she has heat rash. And and those toilets, they won't flush. And, we, and I can't get the plumbers to come honey, over here. Honey, and I can't look, cook. Look, you know look, I can't cook. Look, you're try trying to do too much all at once. Look, nobody expects a gourmet meal every night. Next time, make it easy. Just order out for pizza. You know how much I love pizza, right? Mm, it's a lot. And go spend the summer out of the Hamptons with your parents. I'll come out on the weekends. No! I want to be with you, and I want you to be with Angelica. I don't want you to be a weekend father. Fine. I'll call the plumber in the morning. I'll threaten him with death. I'll buy another fan, and everything will be just fine. Mm-hmm. I promise. Mm.
Oh no, it's so hot. Shh. Shh. Angelica, shh. Shh. Come on, come here. Come on, Mama. the most marvelous place to spend the summer. And it's only a few blocks from your office. Excuse me. Hi, I'm Rocco Cipriani. Oh, I'm supposed to meet my wife. Oh, Mr. Cipriani, okay. right this way. And some navy days, yeah. Oh, and some cotton shirts and uh, shorts. Yes. Uh, colors. It doesn't really matter. Why don't you just send over what you have, and I'll send back whatever doesn't work. Okay. Oh, and connect me with the baby department again. Uh, can you just send that over to my accountant? Uh, Honey, hi. Come on in. Make yourself a drink. Oh, hi. Yeah. This is Maxie Amberville. Ah, uh, again. Yes. I forgot to order some nighties. Yes. Just send them right over. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hi, honey. Maxie Amberville. You want to tell me what the hell is going on here? Lobster. Perfectly cooked, not the least bit rare. Yeah, but you still didn't answer my question. What's going Isn't on? Isn't it worth anything just to be cool? Look at this place. Oh, Aaron, uh, could you tell them where to put all the flowers? Thank you. What are you, going crazy or what? Honey, don't get mad. It's just for the summer. Well, how much is this going to cost? About $3,000 a week, but it's just for the summer until our apartment's ready. That's that. That's $30,000 for the summer. Maxie, I only make $35,000 a year. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Until what apartment is ready? What no, are you talking you're about? You're gonna love it. It is the most gorgeous apartment with an entire view of the city and the river. And it's got a great little room for your studio. I'll take you there tomorrow. I told you. I'm not taking any money from your parents. Didn't I tell you that? Yes, I know. I know. It's OK, because it's not theirs. It's mine. Yours. Right. I came into a trust fund of $5 million when I turned 16, and I get another five when I turn 21. I get another five million when I turn 25. So you see, it's not like taking money from them because it's my money for us to share. No. No? No, Max, no. I can't accept this offer. <laughs> Why? Because, because it goes against everything I believe in. I, 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 I've never lived like this, and look, I'm not, I'm not gonna start now. Uh, the baby's clean and happy and wants to kiss mommy oh, night night. Sweetie. Mm. Now you do everything that Nanny tells you to do, okay? Good night. Oh, say good night to Daddy. <laughs> good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night, baby. That's it. Let's go. Pack up the baby. We're getting out of here. Come on. Bye. Look, Maxie, I'll give you five minutes to pack. Let's go. And if I don't? Look, just don't push me. Get the baby, pack up, let's go home. Well, to that rat trap you call an apartment? Hey, hey. Rocco, you get to spend all day in an air-conditioned office, and Angelica and I have to spend the whole day in the heat in that rotten loft. Hey, that rotten loft is where we live. But it doesn't no, 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 no. If you want to live with me, you live there. You don't live there, you don't live with me. Honey, it's my money. Mine. Why can't we use it? Don't you understand me? No, I Well, don't. listen then. If I take the money from you, or if I take it from them, it's the same thing. To me, it's still a handout. But that's stupid. No, no, that's the way it is. Why? Because I say oh, so. Oh, just because you say so, that's it. That's right. Hey, hey, hey. Sir? Hey. Yes, sir. Us. What happened to her other carriage? I left it in the park. I bought her that oh, one. Oh, I bought her this one. What's the difference? <laughs> that's the difference. Right? Fine. Smash it. I'll just go buy her another one. Yeah, you do that. Leave him, Maxie. If I walk out that door, I'm not.
coming back. Are you coming with me or not? No, go ahead. Walk out. Walk out. See if I can. Yeah, right, 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 right. You got a trust fund. Here. What do you need a husband for? You tell your father to take this job and stick it. Second team, please. Can I just go on to yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. How's that, Larry? Right. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Now, now, where were we? He he said terrible things, and and he walked out on you. That was three months ago. I haven't seen him since. The Amberville lawyers are taking care of everything. Oh, Maxie, honey, I'm so sorry. Look, I was uh, wrong about Rocco. Uh, he's insecure, immature, insensitive, pathetic. <laughs> Look, I was a fool to fall for a pretty face. Live and learn. Anyway, what about you? How's it feel to be a movie star? Oh, it's only my second movie coming out. Listen, her first film had domestic rentals, which made Thanks. it the top moneymaker in the country. Hi, my name's Fred Niles. Maxie Amberville. This lady has arrived. Every time he says that, I break out in high. Stuff. I've already got her points in her next two films, and I could make ten more deals tomorrow if I wanted to. But I want to handle her very carefully from now on. Only the best directors, the best scripts. She's very special. Everyone should have someone who believes in them the way my agent believes in me. Why shouldn't I believe in you? Did you see the grosses on that last film? You know, I still can't quite believe it. People are starting to recognize me in the supermarket, Max. You won't Max. Even be able to go into a supermarket. I don't know why that prospect doesn't seem very appealing. I think this is great. My friend is going to be famous. We're all getting hives and... Pal palpitations. Right, Pack, I hope we don't go into overtime. I have a, an appointment with Dr. Florsheim. He cures hives and palpitations? My analyst, Dr. Florence Florsheim. You have an analyst? India, could we have you for a lineup, please? Sure. Thank you. OK, well, <laughs> onwards and upwards in the arts, huh? <laughs> See ya. Right. See you later. So how about dinner tonight? I'll pick you up at 8. Well, why not? I love girls from New York. You can talk to them. I mean, girls around here, forget it. They're so, uh, shallow. Are you cold? Scared. Of what? I'm pretty new to this. I've only been divorced a few months, and the only man I've ever been with is my husband. I don't know if I'm ready yet. Well, how long do you think it'll take before you are ready? I don't know. Because I got a director in London I've got to talk to, and if I call him now, I can reach him at his house before he leaves for work. Do you mind? Larry? Fred, yeah. Listen, babe, I talked to them, and they're not willing to push back the start date any further. Because they'll have post-production problems if they want to open in December to qualify. Yeah. But listen, they're, they're, they understand your casting problems. And they came up with a few ideas, some of which are not horrible. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a new guy. I'm sure you've never heard of him. He just uh, did a picture that he wrote for himself. Yeah, it's a low-budget fight picture. Larry, no one's even heard of the guy. But I think he's got a future. Yeah. His name's Sylvester. <laughs> Can you believe that? 
lump of mush of golden delicious? What's wrong with it? Go ahead, bite into it yourself and tell me how long ago it was picked. I just bought 20 cases of these from Upstate. They swore they were picked this week. These Fresh off the tree. These have been in cold storage for months and you know it. You go peddle them somewhere. Else. But, uh, mister, I'm sorry. No, no. I, I got some other apples in the truck. I don't want to hear it. Forget it. Don't ever try to rob a blind man again. How's that sauce, Robert? Very good. Just about finished. Like a taste? Yeah. There you go. You didn't use shallots? Well, we were running low. I used baby onions instead, but I don't think anyone will notice. I notice. Here, let me do it. Come on, get, look out. Get out of my way. Don't stare at me. Just get out of here. You stand to work for someone so picky. <laughs> well, that's why we call him Tobias the Terror. And God help you if the flowers are an hour too old or the candles an inch too short. I just got hell in the kitchen for substituting baby onions for shallots, but we got the Restaurant Critics Award for that dish. Hey, he's the best. Robert? Robert? Help! Help me, somebody! Fire! Help! Somebody help me! Call the fire department. Help me! Toby, put your arms out! Put your arms out! I heard your favorite song was Smoke It's In Your Eyes, but this is ridiculous. I brought you something. What is it? Fireproof oven mitts. I already have some. They don't work. I have no business being in a kitchen. Are you crazy? You happen to be a boy wonder with a spatula. I'm blind, Maxie. And you and I and everyone else in this family has been doing their best to deny it, but the fact is I can't bloody see. I know. Blind as a bat, so what? Stop calling me bat. It's in poor taste. You're not gonna let this get you down, are you? Maxie, I could have died. But you didn't. You had an accident in the kitchen. It could have happened to anyone. Toby, the doctors say you're gonna be just fine. Please, don't start feeling sorry for yourself. Maxime, stop it. Toby's right. We can't take any more risks with his life. Yeah. I don't want him to risk his life any more than you do. I'm making arrangements for you to come back home when you come out of hospital. Someone has to take care of him. He is only blind. Would you please stop treating him like a cripple? He has to be cared for. Look what almost happened to him. It could have happened to anyone. But he isn't just anyone. He's your brother. And he's severely handicapped. How is he? He's dreadfully fine. upset. I'm going to talk to him. Hello. I always taught you that if you tried hard enough, you could do anything you set your mind to. I lied. There are things that you will never be able to do. And there are things that you will only be able to do badly. I just don't know where to go from here. I don't know if this is a clear message to stop trying, or I, d I don't know. Maybe I pushed you too hard. 
Maybe I pushed you where you shouldn't be. If that is the case, I'm sorry, I really am. But I do know that nobody gets anything without taking a risk, and nobody can determine what an acceptable risk is for you, except you. Angelica and yourself, we're leaving. Where to? For how, for how long? Doesn't matter. Just pack the basics. Whatever we don't have, we'll buy when we get there. All right. Harper, could you please bring our bags down? Oh, and tell Ellie we're on our way to the airport. Oh, very good, Miss. Thanks. 23, it uh, seems a little crowded. Maybe if you uh, Excuse slip me. two smaller uh, ads I just want to let you know place. that I'm leaving now. Goodbye. Where are you going? I'm going to the airport. I'm going to catch the first plane out. I'm taking Nanny and Angelica with me. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you think a little pre-planning would be in order? Oh, Daddy, I just want to get out of here. That's Maxie, all. Maxie, why don't you just sit down and let's talk about no, it? No, Mom, I've made up my mind. Thanks. Zachary? Well, would you, uh, would you consider leaving Angelica with us? No. Well, would you consider, um, giving us a call when you get there? That I can do, yes. <laughs> I love you. I, I love, love you. you. Goodbye. Be careful, all right? Bye, Mom. Goodbye. Well, she's headstrong and heading for trouble. Oh, you spend so much time on your damn magazine, you've never had time to be a real father. Look at Justin. I have to be father and mother to him. I think I've tried. I mean, you're the one who pushes me out of your lives as if you're protecting Justin from me. Dad? Where's Maxie going? She's, uh, she's going away on vacation. Don't worry, I'm still here. Yes, you are. Is my son getting too old to give his old man a kiss? No. Mm. Kill me. No, Dad! <laughs> no, Is that it right there? Is that the spot? Dad, no! Huh? Is that the spot right there? <laughs> <laughs> Mesdames, no bets, please. Les jeux sont faits, rien de Oui. Le 25 noir, un père remporte la mise. Quand tu le fais, c'est à la banque. 10 on 23 red. 10 on 0. Voilà. Faites le jeu, s'il vous plaît. Il n'y a pas plus. Je sont prêts. Le 4, père rouge, 25. remporte la mise. So much for beginner's luck. Et nous avons un gagnant ici. Have another 10,000, please. Yes, of course, Miss Anne-Bavel. 10 for me. 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 Ten on zero. Oui, monsieur. Rien de plus. No more bets. Zero. You won. Let it ride. Oui, monsieur. Oh, you can't do that. You you lose everything. Rien ne va plus, nos morbettes. Attention, You won! Congratulations! Let it ride. Oh, no, look, you should take these chips off the board right now. Why? 
because you've won. If you leave it on here, you'll lose everything. You mean play it safe? Some bet, monsieur? Why not? No, you can't. Don't. Look, here, just take them, okay? Y'a pas plus, no more bets. Mettre juste, s'il vous plaît. Y'a pas plus. Je serai prêt. Zero. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. It's only money. Only money? It's over 40 million dollars. Well, no one can call you a cheap day. You want a drink? I, I think I need one. This is for the boys. Merci, monsieur. Steel mills and oil benches. It accounts for 3% of Australia's gross domestic product. <laughs> and a cash flow of close to a billion dollars a year. And I think I felt sorry for you. <laughs> Here, I thought you were some sort of wharf rat who had borrowed a dinner jacket just to bet his last dime or shilling or farthing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm the only heir to the Brady fortune. Only problem is I'm bored to death with discussions about drilling for oil off the coast of China or mining gold in South Africa. So I asked the board of directors for a leave of absence, and they were only too happy to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do now? Do? Well, <laughs> I water ski, drink, Listen to music. Uh, I sail, fly my helicopter, drink some <laughs> Sometimes I'm so busy I can't even get to the casino before midnight. <laughs> it's a full life. Aren't you ever bored? I'm not bored now. Hmm. As I see it, I own you. Forty million dollars worth anyway. You agree? It's only fair. What shall I do with you first? I never owned a $40 million girl before. <laughs> well, it's up to you, but just remember the meter's running. How much? One million. What, per week? <laughs> per hour. And you just spent the first two hours talking. this game, even if you can't bet on it. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Would you consider marrying someone like me? Uh, someone like you? Me, actually. <laughs> I have a daughter, you know. <clears throat> oh, very good. I've never had a daughter. <laughs> well? Well? What time is it? <laughs> Ten in the morning. How long have we been here? <laughs> 34 hours. <laughs> Oh. Come on, Maxie. Answer me. Well, let's see. 34 hours, plus the two hours you spent talking. That's 36. So, if you can get this done and arranged within the next four hours, I don't see what choice I have. Oh. <laughs> I hated getting divorced again, but I was going out of my mind. It was so boring living with a man who didn't want to do anything. Also, shuttling Angelica and Nanny back and forth from Monte Carlo every month. Oh, that was a nightmare. 
But Rocco would not give up his visitation rights. You know, when you really want a hamburger, a salad just won't do it. But my nutritionist forbade me to eat red meat. Why do you have a nutritionist? Uh, you're always so beautiful and, and healthy. He's a nutritionist to countless stars. Maxie, he can put off the plastic surgeon for three years, just what he can do with lettuce. My astrologer recommended him. Your astrologer? Oh, I always double-check everything that my agent recommends with my astrologer. They deal in, in different priorities. I mean, for example, my agent thinks that I should do drama, but my astrologer maintains that Uranus is more favorable to comedy. Maxie, don't give me that look. It all goes with being a star. Oh. <laughs> of course, if I weren't a star, I could eat a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I saw you, you were going into analysis. It's Dr. Florsheim. I still am. Indian, what do you need all this advice for? Because I'm scared. Scared? <laughs> all the time. Of what? Are you scared it's all going to go away? It won't, you know. You happen to be very, very good. Oh, I don't know which scares me most, that it will last or that it won't. I mean, as you can see, I'm a 10-foot pole neurotic who can't make a commitment to anything except the next movie. But we were talking about you. And what are you going to do with your life now, the life that you've utterly wasted so far, except for producing Angelica, huh? Are you going to put oregano on the scabetti sauce? Yes, I'm going to put oregano on the scabetti sauce. But you still didn't answer my question. I asked you, what was it like living with your mother at the hotel? I like it. Mom travels so much, she says it's more convenient than an apartment. I like it because I like to order room service. Don't forget the oregano, Dad. Angelica, wouldn't you rather be more settled down? I was settled down for a while, living on Dennis's yacht. Honey, that's not settled down. That was fun. But I can't see them soon more because they're divorced. So the hotel's fine. Uh, what about your mother? Is she seeing anybody special? No. She sees lots of people, but none of them are special. How about you, Pop? What about me? Are you seeing anyone special? Angel, we're talking about your mother, aren't we? Yeah. Well, Mom sees lots of people. But then, if I like them, when she doesn't see them anymore, I miss them. So I stop paying attention. You know what I wish, honey? I wish you could have a normal childhood. Just like other kids, going to school and coming back home to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That's what I wish. It's okay, Daddy. Besides, I get the feeling Mom's getting ready to settle down again. Something tells me this time she's really got her feet on the ground. You're between Kelso and Ettrick Forest. Who are you? I was, um, I was ballooning with some friends, and I started to run out of fuel, so I had to come down. Well, let me welcome you, then, to my castle. Your castle? I'm Oswald Charles Walter Angus, Earl of Kirk Gordon. You are? My friends can call me the daddy. I'll just bet they do. Eat still now, your lordship. Hold it. Good. Thank you.
Is it really very old? It's over 800 years old. Can I play in it? How'd you like to live in it? Can we, Mum, please? Please? has this wonderful idea for pink marble in the... Uh, well, what do you think? Lovely. Darling, it's so cold in here. How can you stand it? Years of practice, my dear. Once the central heating is finished, you won't feel the cold. Oh, Milton, sometimes I feel so hopeless. I gave you a free hand over a year ago, and this tomb is still so cold and dank. I mean, how many millions of dollars does it take before central heating starts working? You'll be so happy when it's done. Pink marble it is. I just make too many decisions based on that terribly old-fashioned thing called love. And sex. <laughs> This feels so wonderful. I think it's going to take me an entire year just to get warm again. And he was an earl, too. You try waking yourself up in the middle of the night, telling yourself that you're a countess, and see if that does you any good. <laughs> Why didn't you bail out before you'd redone his entire castle? I was too embarrassed to admit I'd made another mistake. Max, I don't understand why you feel you have to keep marrying these guys. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I do know one thing, though. I will never marry another man again. Do you hear me? I hear you, but I don't believe you. I mean it. Aren't you a little young for such a vow? I don't care. When it comes to men, my judgment stinks. I can't be trusted. <laughs> India, if I ever marry again, you have my authorization. Take out a full-page ad declaring that Maxie Amberville has lost her mind. Where should I run it? Uh, anywhere. It doesn't matter. The Wall Street Journal, the, the, London, uh, the London Observer, the New York Times, Figaro. How about the trades out here? OK, fine. I, Maxie Amberville, do solemnly swear to never, ever marry another man again. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> well, was it hard going through another divorce? Actually, I'm getting good at it. Sorry I was too young to remember yours and mom's. Now that must have been something. <laughs> I was there, honey. You're lucky. Well, at least we finally got an apartment here in New York. Yep. Trump Tower. Not bad. <laughs> Your mother never does things in halves. Nice place. Corner apartment. Must have set you back a pretty penny. But then you and I never did see eye to eye in real estate, did we? <laughs> you want to come up and see it? No thanks, Max. Well, I'm glad you're back. Thank you. Be nice having my daughter in Manhattan instead of her traipsing halfway around the world. See you later, honey. Bye, Dad. What time did he say he'd be here? He's always 15 minutes late. It's his trademark. That and being the youngest barracuda in the water. Ah, there's a lot I could do with 15 minutes. Indulge him. It's a good firm. It'll be a real nice setup for you. George, Jumbo. You're not getting punchy on me, are you? Hey, you're the one that keeps canceling racquetball. George, I'd like you to meet Cutter Amberville. How do you do? I've heard only good things. Your, uh, your friend Booker here is like your own personal PR firm. <laughs> well, it's all lies, I'm sure. Oh, he told me about those banking deals you put together in Belgium. It was very impressive. Well, we were able to take good advantage of the strength of the dollar. Uh, sure you want to join us for lunch? No, no, you two have got a lot to talk about. Uh, I'll see you later. Good seeing you. Jumbo. 
I won't uh, beat around the bush, Cutter. I can use a man with your connections in our banking division. I'm assuming, of course, that you can bring your brother's business along with you. Yeah, absolutely. We've always worked together. Good. Then with commission, you should do very well for yourself. Sounds good. I thought of starting Monday, Sam. <laughs> Even better. Get me Zachary Amberville. He's on the line. Zachary, George Peterson. Good news, your brother is about to join our firm. So I thought now that it's all in the family, we might finally schedule that racquetball game we've been putting off for so long. I don't know, George. Uh, <clears throat> you've caught me off guard here. I don't know what to say. What do you mean? Is there a problem? I thought uh, your brother handled all your investments. Uh, look, I don't make it a habit of discussing family business, but my advice to you is forget Cutter Amberville. He's bad news. Hello. I'm Cutter Amberville. Do you have an appointment? Well, I work here, starting now. I don't seem to have you on uh, file. Please just tell Mr. George Peterson that Cutter Emberville is here. Thank you. Mr. Peterson, there's a Cutter Amberville here to see you. He'll be right with you. Thank you. Amberville? George, <laughs> it's quite a view you've got here. This isn't going to work out after all. Someone should have told you. What are you talking about? Well, I thought you could bring in your brother's business. Turns out you can't. We don't really have any other use for you. Wait a minute, Peterson. We got a deal here. Under false pretenses, wouldn't you say? Did you talk to my brother? He's the one who did this, isn't he? What did he tell you? He told me you were the plague. Sorry, old buddy. It looks like sayonara. Wait a minute, Peterson, wait a minute! Your brother is in desperate need of your help. So then why did Cutter call you? Oh, it's in the past. Forget it, or at least forgive. I mean, yes, forgive him. He's your brother. But he called you. Yes, but it's over. It's all over. I mean, it's, it's sick of you to be jealous like this. Just let go. It's sick of you to hold oh, on to it like this. Don't tell me that. Who was the first person that he called? <sighs> and who comes rushing to his defense? If you were free now, you'd go to him, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Don't ask me this question. You've no right. No right? No right? <laughs> no, I've just brushed over the biggest hurt in my life, your affair with Cutter. Oh, because I was feeling guilty about you leaving everything behind that you loved. And you had me convinced that my preoccupation with my work... I, I'm too old to go on kidding myself anymore. <sighs> Trying to hold something together. It never was. I'm gonna go to bed. your message? Uh, I'm going up to Canada for a week. I just got to get away to think. I tried calling Pavka, but he wasn't home. Oh. I'd, I'd like the two of you to look after the store while I'm gone. Oh, sure, of course. Zach, what is it? Is there something wrong? I just got to get my life back on track. I know I don't have any right to ask this of you. I've made so many mistakes over the years. We have to save what we can. It's, it's insane for us not to be together. I don't know what to say. You say anything. I 
love you. I've always loved you. taking Angelica skiing in Chile. Skiing? Now? Yes. It is the season for it in Chile. Isn't it dangerous? No, Mother, it's not. Besides, I need to change. I, I thought you bought that apartment here so you could settle down in New York for a while. I'm only taking a vacation. Why, you spent the last 29 years doing exactly what you want. I don't suppose anything I can say will make any difference now? No, I don't suppose there is. What is wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing. Excuse me. Here for the best omelet in New York City. Not a lecture. Why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling at you. I am asking you to take a long, hard look at your life. I don't want to. I don't blame you, because you're throwing it away. What have you accomplished? Name one thing. There's Angelica. Right. You have an 11-year-old daughter who's more grown up than you are, and you're almost 30. Wait a second. I'm only 29. What's the rush? It's those ages that end in nine, kiddo. And you have to take stock. Ask yourself what you've done with your life. All you've done is gone through three marriages. Well, who says I have to do anything with my life? Oh, look, Goldilocks, anyone with as much talent and brains and money as you have has an obligation to do something with their life. Now, other than Angelica, what have you done? Why did I ever tell you not to feel sorry for yourself? Mr. Amberville. Yeah? Are you sure you don't want me to go with you? No, I'm just gonna get some exercise, but I'll be nice anyway. There we go. Uh... See you later. Uh-huh.
What the hell are you doing here? I want to talk to you. I've got nothing to say to you. I want to talk to you about George Peterson. He asked me my opinion, and I gave it to him. He's going to ruin every job that comes to me. I'm not going to cover for you, Cutter, to anyone. Why do you hate me? Yeah, you've got that wrong, brother. It's you who hate me. You always have. Get off that horse. I want to talk to you. There's nothing to say. Get you off don't that horse! me, Cutter, anymore! Get out of my way! Get off that horse! Get out of my way! You talk to me! Oh. Oh. Yeah. What do you want? You never wanted me to have anything, did you? You never wanted me to have anything. You wanted it all, all the money and the power, all the glory. You wanted you it only all. wanted what you could take from me! You're right, Zachary. I stole what was yours right out from underneath you. Your wife. I had her for years. I had her every way I could. In your house, on your floor, at your parties. She always wanted it for me, Zachary. You were never man enough for her. Guess which one of your children is mine, Zachary, huh? Maybe, Maybe one. one. Maybe two. Maybe all. Nothing at all. We've been searching for more than 30 hours now. We don't see some sign of life soon. I wouldn't lay odds on his chances. Uh-oh, wait a minute. I see a red object. Could be him. I'm gonna set it down. Thank you. 
Hello? Where have you been? I've been trying to reach you for two days. It's, it's Zachary. He was missing and he's, he's had a terrible accident in Canada. I was in Chicago. Is he all right? No, no, but he, he is in a coma. He was out riding and, oh, I don't know, he must have fallen from his horse. Anyway, Maxie and I, we're, we're on our way up there to see him. All right. Wait for me. I'll meet you at the jet right away. Doctor, I think we need to move him as soon as possible to a hospital in New York. I'm afraid we can't do that. Moving the patient at this time is out of the question. Well, he can't possibly get the kind of care he needs here. If he needs surgery, we would rather he were in New York with his own doctor. Mrs. Amberville, no one operates on your husband while he's fighting this pneumonia. Operating on him, even moving him at this stage could be fatal. If you'll come with me, I'll need you to sign for your husband's things. No, please. Here, I'll do it. Thank you. Please check that everything's there before you sign. Thank you. At the request of Mrs. Amberville, I've made a serious study of Amberville publications since my brother's uh, tragic and unexpected death. Now, while most of our magazines are undisputed leaders in their fields, I think it's time we all face the fact that four of those magazines are in trouble. Your mother has decided to cease publication of the four magazines that are losing money. They are Sound Talk, Green Gardens, Vacation, and Buttons and Bows. Oh, this is not I, open I for could... discussion. What? You're kidding me. Cutter, Amberville Publications is not in financial trouble. The only danger is the one that you're causing. 
You are my father's younger brother, but you have never been a part of his publications, and you never will be. Please, Maxie, please. There's something that I must tell you all. When I asked your Uncle Cutler to tell you this difficult news, I didn't quite understand how unsettling it was going to be. Please, you mustn't blame him for my decision. I haven't been able to tell you the reason until now that I asked him to speak for me. But I... Yesterday, your mother and I were married. What? That's not true. Mother, tell me this isn't true. Maxie, if marriage was so unthinkable to you, I'm sure you wouldn't have done it so often. I can't believe you would do this, Mother. I haven't heard her deny it, Justin. How could you do this so soon after Daddy's death? How? I'll not be judged by you or by anyone else, Maxie. Well, Toby, Justin, and I will just not stand idly by and watch you destroy Father's work. Amberville Publications is Zachary Amberville. My God, Mother, he just died five months ago! You have taken his wife and his house. Now you want to destroy what he's built. I will not discuss this with you, Maxie. I'll have to ask you to leave my office. There's just one thing, Cutter. A friend of mine, India West, came across some very interesting information some time ago. It has to do with a certain Amberville stud and the relationship he had with a certain Nanette Alexander and the bearing it had on a suicide of a certain Candace Amberville. You're trying to blackmail me, Maxie, and it won't work. Those magazines are out of business as of this morning. The decision was your mother's to make, and she made it. And you're a filthy liar. How dare you talk to me like that? I know you, Cutter. My mother did not make those decisions. You made those for her. I don't know why yet, but I'm going to find out. Goodbye, Maxie. I'm just going to make sure my mother understands you, too. Maxie! All right. What do you want? One magazine for one year. Don't shut the others down. If I can take one magazine, turn it around, and make it show a profit, all of the others stand as they are. Apparently, you think you've inherited your father's touch. Maybe I have. Which one do you want? Buttons and bows, the one that started it all. For you. I can tell. I've only got about an hour. Let's get your clothes off. Fine. So, how do you shake your wife this time? She's where every mother should be with her kids. <laughs> and how was your meeting? It wasn't a meeting, it was a funeral. I just buried my dear brother. But he's been dead for several months. Well, he's a hard man to bury. But I'm going to take his empire apart piece by piece and bury him for good. Now, come on. I'm ready. <laughs> you always are. Goldilocks, it won't work. It's got to work. Why, to fight Cutter? Yes, fight him and win. Didn't you get a delivery? Of what? A B and B. The damn thing sold out. You mean people bought them? Never saw anything like that before. They just melted <laughs> away. People who go against me pay a price. Keep away from my family, because if you don't, I'll bring you to trial. I swear it. 